I'm Josh. My mountain roots have given shape to the body of my filmmaking work exploring Appalachia. But recently, I had a chance to explore a new state that I haven't covered yet in my episodes. And this is that state. Actually, it's one of four states to call itself a commonwealth. Welcome to Pennsylvania. So many of you have asked me to visit Pennsylvania over the last year, and now, since my work with PBS is taking me further from home, I want to build on my work exploring Appalachia. And to do that, I'm kicking things off here in Ridgeway, Pennsylvania. Located in the northwest of the Commonwealth, in Pennsylvania's great outdoor region, just a couple hours drive from the Canadian border in Elk County, Ridgeway is the chainsaw carving capital of the world. How did it earn that distinction, you ask? Well, let's find out. Sitting in a brewery that was once a bank where both Taylor Swift's great-grandfather and grandfather worked, I met with a local historian who shared the history of how this place came to be why Ridgeway is here. Well, th this area here was the, what they called the Six Nations Confederacy, which was like the Iroquois, Onondagas, that you have the Native American influence, and then um, most of everything that happened after 1817, when Mr. Ridgeway bought this land, was enticing settlers to come here and buy up pieces of this land. There was, there was nothing here. The Mr. Ridgeway Bob speaks of was none other than Jacob Ridgeway, a Philadelphia businessman and shipbuilder whose net worth in 1817 would have exceeded $130 billion in today's money. White pine trees were the premier shipbuilding timber, and that is how he discovered the land that is now Ridgeway, because it possessed some of the finest stands of white pine in the world. Many people came here to make their wealth in the lumber industry, well into the Gilded Age. Easy access to downriver markets made this a lucrative proposition, not only in nearby Pittsburgh, but men would bind logs together making huge timber log rafts and would ride them all the way to markets as far as New Orleans, where they would buy a horse to ride for the return journey. This created so much wealth that by the late 1800s and into the early 1900s, Ridgeway had the highest concentration of millionaires in the entire Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, which is evident in what they call Millionaire's Row. I also discovered that the renowned Hyde Murphy wood molding, which can be seen in buildings in New York and places like the Library of Congress and the Pentagon in Washington, D.C., originated right here in Ridgeway. It's also in many of the mansions here and even in the brew bank. Before I um, started doing the chainsaw carving, at that point I was doing other artistic things such as being a musician. I, was, I wrote uh, 100 original songs. I released five uh, music CDs myself. I, um, I was working in the lumber industry. I was working in the carpentry industry. And so these are, you know, everything with wood. I enjoyed the process of creating things and I just needed, uh, you know, some way to tie it all together. And, um, you know, with the Bonnies uh, having this Chainsaw Carver's Rendezvous, it just opened so many doors for so many people that I've met over the years. I mean, thousands and thousands of artists have come through this town that were in the same boat as I was, that were maybe a carpenter, maybe a tree trimmer. Somebody that appreciated wood and thought that they could do more with you know, our raw materials that were really just gonna be thrown away or pushed over the bank at a, you know, a logging site. It is against the backdrop of this timber and artisan woodworking past that Ridgeway today is home to both Chainsaw Carvers and the International Chainsaw Carvers Rendezvous. Started by this woman. Hi. 
I met my husband in Florida. He was from Ridgeway and we kind of decided that if we were going to have a family, we were going home. And you know, we came back here and uh, it was a bit of a challenge because he was uh, an artist, so to speak. He had gone to art to school to, with a degree in art and we knew it was going to be more of a challenge here than anywhere else, but it was what we knew and it was a great place to raise our kids. And um, it's, been, it's been a journey. It's been uh, wild and crazy and a lot of fun. Tell more than about the wild and crazy and fun. Okay. Well, the wild and crazy was the day he said to me, I'm going to quit my job and be a full-time chainsaw artist. And I'm like, are you kidding me? Who's going to buy one of those? And um, believe me, I have eaten my words, so make them soft and tender. Um, chainsaw art has taken us around the world. Um, it has opened doors to um, awards and um, just wonderful, meeting wonderful people from everywhere and a, a cultural exchange, you know, not only in art, but in communities and in, and in spirit and in just a lot of love and, and compassion for the arts. And it's just been wonderful. The Chainsaw has done for the world of sculpture what the electric guitar did for music. I learned from Liz that chainsaw carving is now considered the first American art form to originate in the United States. The Bonnies have been recognized with international awards for opening the world up to chainsaw art. When you think that you know, you're know you living in this little area in this little woods and that's just how your life is going to be and all of a sudden you're handed an airplane ticket you know, to, to travel. Over the years the rendezvous has grown exponentially. I mean it has gone from 30 carvers to I think the most we ever had was 237 carvers. You know, and I have to give kudos to Pennsylvania Great Outdoors, to our tourist promotion agency. Over the years, we have gone from maybe two or 3,000 people attending this event to well over 40,000 people coming. And this year, thanks to them once again, we've noticed that we are reaching over a million people. So I'm very excited to see what this year will bring. So, I mean, it's, got, it's worldwide. It, is, it, it blows me away. When I hear these stories about people in other parts of the world that hear about Ridgeway, little old Ridgeway, you know, that uh, they want to come here and take part in this event. Because we are just a bunch of wood hicks. <laughs> Before leaving, I asked Liz about this area's connection to Appalachia, since it's in the name of their studio, the Appalachian Art Studio, to which she replied, they feel this place is untapped Appalachia in the sense of outdoor experiences as well as the arts, both deserving of recognition. I recognize that Appalachia holds different connotations to different people, but to Liz, in her own words. That's roots, that's music, that's art, that's, that's family, that's, it's, it's huggable, as you said, it's, it's love. Ridgeway has a lot to offer. Beyond the sawdust and Bigfoots, there's a vibrant entrepreneurial spark that's flourishing here. Moved to Ridgeway because I had retired from my job in a doctor's office for 18 years and decided I wanted to do a B&B. It was like a dream that I always had. And the B&B was uh, built in 1865. That's why the name's 1865. It has Hyde Murphy Woodwork, which is pretty much world renowned. I had 13 different countries stay in a five-week period, really? different countries. Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah, they come from all over to see our uh, uh, herd of elk that we have in Elk County. That's pretty. I mean, people come from all over to see it, and then our um, the leaves, the foliage, and the fall, Bridge. and the Kinzoo. I mean, there's just there's a plethora of things here. It's crazy just in this little area how beautiful of an area we really do have. Yeah. Um, I'm originally from Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, 1997, I graduated from Slippery Rock College. I have a degree in music, and I came up here to be the music teacher. COVID changed everything. When COVID hit, I was directing everybody's plays for ev all around the area, and I couldn't direct any more plays. You can only have 25 people in a location, so that's when I decided to start waiting tables here. And for the last three years, I've been doing that. And uh, just recently, we've discussed it, and it worked out that I am now going to, I'm in the process of the finally, finalization of the purchase of this structure. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. I love it. Coming from Pittsburgh, you go from this big town to this little, uh, the middle of nowhere. We're in the middle of the Allegheny National Forest. Yeah, but right. at first it was just, even though you think that you're going from this big to a small, it was slightly intimidating. 
but then you come to this small town because everybody knows everybody and everybody knows that I'm not from here. So it takes a little while to get your, to get your bearings, but once you do, Ridgeway is about as welcoming of the town as you'll ever see. And I've heard from like tons of our visitors too, that they're just like, if I'll get businessmen coming through, they're like, we're coming back and bringing my wife. It's like stepping back in time. It's safe, people walk downtown to eat, come down here for a beer, whatever, and it's just safe and they love it. Yeah. They love it. Yeah. It's just quaint. People talk with you, get to know your story. Oh right yes, there. and you get to know theirs and yeah, it's really fun. It's people appreciate hometowns, they really do. You, but the one thing I wanna say about Ridgeway, they're very open to that and they're excited for it. And they're like, what's coming next? And, and they're like, what can we do to help? which you don't see that in bigger communities. The small town feel goes a long way. Bridgeway is quaint, um, homey, and it's home. Bridgeway is a great destination for adventures, many adventures. It's obvious after listening to the passion Lori and Jason have for Ridgeway, why people still choose to come visit and why some choose to call it home. Being from Virginia, I've experienced Southern hospitality firsthand, but what I encountered during my time in Ridgeway was second to none. I've heard it said before that nobody retires and moves north, and perhaps I too may have held a little of this bias coming into Ridgeway, but the folks I met here truly showed me the heart and soul of what it is to take pride in and love the place you call home, making outsiders such as myself feel welcome. I think this is a common thread weaving its way across small town America, and if that can't unite us, I'm not sure what can.